Hello and welcome to the franchise episode, episode 29. <laughs> Boom. Uh, I am your host, Daniel Ehrenberg. And I'm your host, Hank Papali. Welcome, everyone. And Merry Christmas. Yeah. Yo, and Merry Happy Hanukkah for my fellow Jews. Uh, happy Hanukkah. Happy whatever you're uh, into, whatever thing that you're doing. <laughs> happy, you want to go happy holidays catch all yeah i guess right because i can't cover everything That's are you a lot are of you things. are you part of the war on christmas uh yes you can count me a member that, no are I you a general I, in the war on christmas yeah yeah i love it i love it no I, i'm not a keep the christ and christmas person although there are signs everywhere in my neighborhood about mine that. too uh, by the way i'm sure mm-hmm. yeah uh no i don't really give a shit but i don't give a shit for the opposite reason that most people do give a shit. You know what I mean? Like, it just completely means nothing to me. I am neither offended if you say happy holidays, I am nor, nor am I offended if you say Merry Christmas. I just don't care. So that's my stance. How about you? Oh, I, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I, I, could, I couldn't have less of an opinion on a subject. Who could care, as yeah, you would say. Yeah, it's true. I mean, get a fucking issue. Uh-huh. Find something. There are starving children in the world. We're getting People. nuked in like a month. <laughs> let's... I know. The world is ending, and let's let's be worried about keeping Christ in Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'll tell you what, guys. You're in for a, a real Christmas treat today uh, mm. because we will be covering Home Alone and Home Alone 2 Lost in New York, our first ever holiday films on this podcast. I uh, guess besides <laughs> the Halloween one, it's true. Did we do a Halloween movie? Well, Friday the Thirteenth. Oh took a yeah, month. I well I know that was a special. That was a holiday special, but it wasn't actually about Halloween. Oh call, okay. I call me when it. we cover Halloween. Ah, uh, I will. I will. I want to do that. Yeah, yeah me too. Yeah. You're right then. Okay, sure. Yeah. Um. So first, we'll be talking about the original. Oh, and you should point out too. Really, this is the first uh, kids movie we've ever covered. Right? Like the first family picture. That's we've true. Ever- yeah, you're right. It is a family movie. We've only, yeah, we've never done that, so. We've never done a family picture? No. we got to do those yet. Beethoven movies. got to do those, some of them Pixar things. Uh, Yeah, Toy Story. Do they have other yeah. sequels? Oh, Cars. Got to oh, do Cars. Oh, <laughs> Ice Age. There's Mon- a lot, lot of them. Ice Age is not Pixar, you piece of shit. DreamWorks. Yeah. Keep those DreamWorks movies away from me. I don't want. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a long while before we cover Shrek on this thing. Oh, you know, I. Uh, yeah, and we're I gonna gr- have to do Puss in Boots too. That fucking spinoff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Uh, I I will be the first to admit I don't. I'm the guy who has to ask which is this a Pixar film because I just can't tell. Hey, I don't know. Hey, here's a, here's a good test, Henry. Are tell, you are you, are you are you watching the movie? Are yeah. you are you enjoying it? Yeah. It's Pixar. Oh, all right. Is that what it is? Yeah. Uh, right. well, I, 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 you know, there's a couple of exceptions. I like that first Kung Fu Panda. but uh, I, didn't I didn't see it. Yeah. I thought when I saw umpteen years ago, I thought when I saw the first Shrek, it had a couple of laughs in there. Yeah, I thought that then, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe I wouldn't now. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I remember know I was... There are. There's uh, four plus the Puss in Boots one. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'll tell you what. When I was working at Blockbuster, that was when Shrek came out. Mm. And uh, for Christmas, every year, Blockbuster would give you a movie. That was your present. They give you a DVD, and everyone got the same DVD, and um, it didn't have a barcode on it. They would they would zap the barcode off, so you couldn't re- return it or exchange yeah, it. Sure. And I remember that year I got Shrek, so I was stuck with Shrek on DVD for a long time before I uh, I think I regifted it. Oh, but, you um, oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. I also uh, one year I remember was Bruce Almighty, so I owned that for a few years. All right. Yeah. yeah. Another one at the time I remember having a couple of laughs, but I think they were mainly Steve Carell scenes. Yeah, I liked that movie at the time too, and and I'll tell you what, I liked yeah. that movie enough that I saw Evan Almighty in theaters. Did you really? Yeah. I didn't go that. That far. was a mistake. Yeah. Uh, we should cover those. All right. <laughs> <laughs> 
I have a lot to say about Evan Almighty. It is weirdly pro-Christian. Is it really? Yeah, it's very, very religious for weird reasons. I don't mm. understand. Well, I remember the whole he's like becomes Noah or some shit. That's all I know. Yeah, but I mean, like it ends with like, it, like it's a real like that movie. Evan Almighty treats the Bible like it's just like like it happened. Oh boy! It, yeah, like that. This happened. Oh no! Um, That's unfortunate. But today we're covering. I think a better movie. We'll we'll see where Henry lands. I yeah. I chose this franchise. I'll come out and say that. Sure did. Um, uh, the first Home Alone by director Chris Columbus and writer John Hughes. Um, and we'll talk about them in a second yes, separately, for sure. but for not sure. equally. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, released November sixteenth, nineteen ninety. Ooh, I watched a nineteen ninety movie this morning, Hank. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I had a nice little rewatch of Kindergarten Cop. (laughs) Okay. It was very enjoyable. Random. All right. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I watched it with my mom, who'd never seen it, and she loved it and cried. Really? (laughs) Yes. Wow. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, You know, concurrently, I watched this morning a documentary on rats. So, oh, that movie Rats by Morgan yeah, Spurlock? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How was that? Uh, disgusting and fascinating. All right. Yeah, very good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so back to Home Alone. Yeah. A uh, budget of $18 million. Uh, nice box office of $476.7 million. Wow. Holy fuck. Yeah. Uh, it was the highest grossing domestic comedy of all time until it was beaten many years later by The Hangover 2. Jesus Christ. By the second Hangover? Yes. Wow. How about that? Didn't know it. Didn't know it. So it held that record for like 20 some years. Correct. It is still the highest grossing Christmas movie of all time. Wow. So don't give me shit for picking this movie on Christmas. No. No. Never, never. It was number one at the box office for 12 straight weeks until it was supplanted by Sleeping with the Enemy. (laughs) And then after that, it took over again. It took over again? Yeah. Wow. How about that? Okay. That's interesting. Uh Uh, Uh-huh. It was uh, number one, the number one film of 1990. Hmm. Let's play the game. What's two through five? (laughs) Mm, 1990. Yeah. Ooh, I should really have a handle on this. Uh, it's kind of in kind of my wheelhouse there that year. But uh, my mind now, since this podcast immediately goes to superhero movies, there's <laughs> one there's, kind of that year. Number uh, five, uh, the Rocketeer. No, that didn't make money. I didn't think so, but. Uh, uh, I need a hint, man. I'm. T- oh wait, 1990. Uh, 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 Dances with Wolves. That's number three. Okay. Uh, Goodfellas. No. Okay. Um, Awakenings. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking out 1990 movies. You mean featuring kindergarten cops, Penelope Ann Miller? No. <laughs> nice, nice one. Yeah. Um, there were no Batman's that year. Um, uh, right, I'll, 19- I'll give you hints. Number, yeah, yeah. number two. Please do. Number yeah. two. The Righteous Brothers. Oh, Ghost. Of course. Yeah. All right. Oh, so, right. So three is Dances with Wolves. Number four. Rick Ocasek. Rick Ocasek. The Cars. Rick Ocasek mm-hmm. was Here. in a movie. No, he wasn't in it. I'll but he had, a, he had the theme song oh, for something? Oh, baby, he did. Okay, I need a little more. Okay, how about Heck? Dr. Elizondo! Pretty woman. <laughs> yeah. Of course, of course. And number five is uh, is a movie that I think is righteous, dude. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure? <laughs> Not Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't do too well. All right. Yeah, was, I got one of them. That was a shitty showing. Sorry. Yeah, That's I got okay. one. You got one. Okay, how about let's do the awards? Because how about this? Home Alone was nominated for some awards. Was it really? It sure was. Nominated for two Oscars. Wow. For uh, a score. 
That's right. John Williams' score, which it lost to Dances with Wolves. That's good. And um, it was also nominated for Best Song, which John Williams also wrote. Uh, you know, that thing where they're... Uh, remember when they're in the church and that choir is singing? Ugh. That's, yeah. a, that's an original song. And, oh, is uh, it? Yeah, it lost to something from Dick Tracy, weirdly. Oh, yeah. Well, Madonna and Sondheim did that. Yeah, I know. Soundtrack. Fucking I'm Breathless. What a piece of shit yeah. album that is. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. and I like Dick Tracy, but the music from that movie is brutal. Uh, yeah, it is. Um, okay, and how about this? Nominated for Best Actor at the Golden Globes, Macaulay Culkin. Wow. Lost. Wow. <laughs> yeah, Best Actor in a Comedy, Musical or Comedy. Lost to Gerard Depardieu. In green card? Yeah, that's right. Okay, I think I redeemed myself now. <laughs> that, that was pretty impressive. Green card, Andy McDowell. All right, so let's talk about Home Alone. This is obviously a movie that I deem a classic. That I, It's because of our ages, Henry. Is it? The, of course it is, because this came out when I was four. I was 12. Mm, yeah, you should have liked it at the time. I think I did. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I did. But I watched this movie a lot. As a kid. That's true. That's true. Like, had I been had I been a, like a toddler and then grown up with it, I probably would have had it would have had like a place in my heart or something. But, which uh, which it does, and I can see its flaws. Probably not as many as you can. Yeah, um, I, I'm sure. I'm gonna but, try to be nice. But like I legit, you don't have to be. I legit like. Um, I remember watching this movie with my sister, and we took a tally. Of who gets hurt the most, Har- uh, <laughs> Harry or Marv? Yeah, that's a good tally. Yeah, we did. Keep, keep going. There's a lot of tallies you could do. Uh, how many times Macaulay Culkin screams into the camera? How many times people address the camera, which yeah. I never noticed before this viewing. Yeah, a lot it's of times. It's horrible. How many times the camera sped up for no reason? Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Home Alone. Or well, Wait. before we get into the movie, are we going to talk at all about, or are we just going to integrate into the conversation John Hughes and Chris Columbus? No, let's do it. I mean... Do what? Let's talk about them. Uh, all right. Chris Columbus, a guy I've always been uncomfortable with, and I'll tell you why. Uh, he's got that production company. Oh. You know what I'm talking about? Wait, what's it called? It's called 1492 Productions. Oh, how creative! Because his name's Columbus, right? And, and I, who does that? Like, who really, <laughs> who really gets into the fact that they're named after a famous person or historical figure? It'd be like if the, you know, the character Michael Bolton from Office Space, right? Like he doesn't like when people talk about Michael Bolton, and he asks right. to be called Mike. It would be like if that character just walked around everywhere with a boombox blasting when a man loves a woman. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Although remember, he doesn't like to be called Mike because why should he give up his name for that no talent ass clown? No, but yeah, I know. But later, remember, he's in that meeting. And oh right, he's like, t- oh, just Mike. Yeah, they love Michael Bolton, <laughs> so he has to be called Mike. Um, so Chris yeah. Columbus, I mean, he's not an artist; he's a commercial director. He's done one movie that I loved. That's it. One movie. Uh, is it Home Alone? No. <laughs> Fucking crazy? No. What and he it? wrote and he wrote one movie I he liked. He writes? He wrote one movie I liked and directed one movie I loved. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. So what are those? Well, I thought you could guess. No. I don't think I can. Okay. He wrote Gremlins. Oh yeah. Yeah, right. He wrote he was a writer in the in the 80s. He also wrote yeah. The Goonies, right? Yeah. Which no. I know you're not a fan of. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, he directed uh, Only the Lonely with John Candy. I've never seen that. You Really? Yeah. Oh, it's very fucking funny. It still holds up. It's very funny. I John mean, Candy's great. Well, John Candy's always great. He's great in Home Alone. <sighs> yes, he is. Yeah. Oh, he's yeah. your MVP, of course. <laughs> um, uh, he's actually directed a lot of movies I like. I, I mean, he's mm. bullshit. He's garbage. He has, he's, okay. a, he's a no-talent ass clown. Oh, all right. <laughs> But, ah, all right. but he has directed a couple movies I like. I, I, I mean, the first Harry Potter, 
mm-hmm. is very good. You, you can I, hear. I remember. I remember liking it. Yeah, you can hear my feelings on the shitty second Harry Potter over on the Real Weird Sisters podcast. Yeah, I, I listened to a little bit of that. Oh, really? Yeah, a little bit of it. I didn't hear the whole four-hour podcast. I know I it's two and a half hours, guys. Sorry. No, but uh, it, it's it's good. The other guy you're on there with, he has some kind of laryngitis or something. <laughs> he he does. It, uh, he yeah. does. He sounds like fucking Funkhauser from Curb Your Enthusiasm. He does sound like it. Larry, listen, listen, Larry. Yeah. 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 yeah shut up, Tim. Yeah. Um, but I mean, Adventures and Babysitting has its moments. That's true. That's true. I, now that's a movie I really liked when I was a kid. Sure. Yeah. But, I mean, he's directed... I mean, Mrs. Doubtfire I liked as a kid. I don't know if I'd like it today. Oh, I forgot he did that. Yeah. Well, I didn't, inc- I didn't include it on my... Yeah, all right. But his unwatchable movies include Nine Months, Bicentennial Man. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that Rent movie. Oh, holy, he did that? Holy fuck is that bad. Yeah, he did that because he's a big fan of the musical. And, like, after <sighs> the Harry Potter movies, he had all that clout, you know? Yeah. So he made that Rent movie. And then oh, he did man. I Love You, Beth Cooper, which is an adaptation of a book I really like, and that's a bad movie. And mm. Percy Jackson trying to start a new Harry Potter-like franchise is terrible. Right. And most recently he did Pixels with Adam Sandler, which um, I haven't Ooh. seen. Uh, so he's had an odd career with mostly bullshit. But makes money. Oh, well, he makes so much money because yeah. he directed those first two Harry Potter movies and then all the really good ones after that by, like, Alfonso Cuaron and David right. Yates. He has yeah. fucking an executive producer credit on. Oh, man. So he's just a cash register, this guy. Oh, he never has to work again. Yeah. He can fucking sit on the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was um, waiting for a Columbus joke. Yeah, I went with that. Yeah. It was good. Sure. I was going to do it, and it wasn't going to be as funny. So you Yeah, how about, how about this one? I mean, he was searching for Harry Potter, and he found Percy Jackson and the Olympians. It was like India or something. I don't know. There you go. <laughs> Some genocidal stuff happening there. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess like, Chris Columbus has never read the first chapter of uh, the the People's History of the United States. No, he, he skipped the Howard Zinn history. Uh, yeah, yeah, good call. Yeah, he missed that one. Um. Yeah. Okay, and then there's John Hughes, who's like... I wrote him down. Yeah. I mean, come on. He he right. wrote he wrote this movie. You, you can't... It's hard to say bad things about John Hughes. I, I wrote down seven movies of his that I either loved or liked very much. Yeah, and I think two or three, possibly, all-time classic movies. I completely agree. Um, and I those- would actually venture to say... One, two, three, four. Okay. All right, give me your list. I'll tell you which ones are all-time classics. <laughs> well, I know you don't agree with one just because I don't think you've seen it ad nauseum like me. Okay. But, uh, but I'm pretty... Uh, What's uh, that one? Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Yeah, that's right. That's the one I've seen the least, probably. Yeah. But I like that movie. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Sixteen Candles. All-time classic. Yeah. Breakfast Club. All-time. That's his best. Yeah. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. All-time classic. Yeah, and then the other three are good, but uh, not classics. Okay, but, so uh, Uncle Buck. Right. Uh, Weird Science. Right. And, um... Uh, this is a tougher one, what but I'm it's missing? still, it's big, still very good. You a big Curly Sue guy? No. <laughs> <laughs> She's having a baby. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah very that's funny. okay. You know, but I mean, and on the writing side, Some Kind of Wonderful is a really good movie. Oh, yeah. And uh, uh, we, you didn't bring up Pretty in Pink, which I think is pretty great. Yep, yep, um, yep. You know, and He's then, a great writer. And then great. my theory is Molly Ringwald refused to be in Some Kind of Wonderful, and um, and he was in love with her, and he decided really? not to make movies anymore. Yeah, I read a, a biography about John Hughes, and there's some weird John Hughes, Molly Ringwald stuff in there. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Because um, she wanted to branch out. I think she did that movie Fresh Horses instead. You know that Western? Sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but huh. Hughes, I mean, after that in the 90s, he just became sort of a, a guy who wrote shitty movies. Mm. Uh, didn't he write Vacation, too, by the way? 
Ooh. Or he at uh, least wrote the story it's based on. I thought Harold Ramis. Yeah, he, he wrote the short story that Vacation oh, is based okay. on. Um, okay. But, uh, yeah, in the 90s, he did stuff like um, Baby's Day Out. Oh, Lord. And yeah. uh, the, the Dennis the Menace movie was his. Oh, uh, so he was phoning it in after yeah, Ringwald. And, and, after Ringwald broke his heart. Yeah, so every point. movie after Home Alone basically had the structure of Home Alone. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then he just quit and then died. Very yeah, sad. Uh, it was sad. But John Hughes, I mean, he's one of the all-time greats. So before you shit on this movie, let's just say that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I would never say anything bad about him. All right. So Home Alone 2. <laughs> Except Kevin, today. Yeah. Kevin McAllister, played by Macaulay Culkin. He's being a brat. His family is going away to Paris the next day on vacation. And uh, he... Uh, he gets sent up to the attic to sleep. Meanwhile, they uh, they miss the alarm. They fuck that up somehow. And then uh, they leave him home alone. So they're in Paris. Uh, Catherine O'Hara, the great improviser from the Christopher Guest films, has yeah. to... Uh, he pl- She plays his mom, and she has to get back home to get him. Meanwhile, he's in the house. There's a couple burglars trolling the neighborhood, Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern. And uh, not yet total cartoons that like they become the second one, <laughs> and uh, and they um, you know they're trying to rob that house, and so he he says it's my house, I have to defend it. Uh, yeah, and a couple <laughs> of uh, uh, interesting things actually just occurred to me when you said about Catherine O'Hara. Uh, both her and John Hurd were both in After Hours. Remember that? Yeah, good point. And and, and both, her and John Candy do co- did, did both come from Second City, not yes, from yes. Yeah, I, yes, I was going to say yeah. that. That yeah, they're they're both from the the SCTV world, right? Um, right. where a lot of Christopher Guest guys come from, including right. uh, Eugene Levy. Yep. But uh, yeah, yeah. So that's why those scenes w- work. I think Catherine O'Hara and John Hurd's chemistry is actually really good in Home Alone. Mm-hmm. And the sequel, and uh, and Catherine O'Hara and John Candy, where supposedly in those scenes they're both of them just improvising the entire time. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and and I think those are genuinely funny. John Candy has has all the darkest lines in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of funeral home jokes and shit. Yeah. Oh so, yeah. Uh, so I'm into that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but okay. Uh, why don't you have at it first? <laughs> Just your overall um, feelings. My overall feeling. Uh, well, I mean, I was prepared to just kind of not really be very excited about it. But I, not... I told you to try and watch this one at like yeah. a, like it's a real movie. Absolutely. Yeah. And I and I did, and yeah. it isn't. Um, oh, <laughs> okay. I, I found it completely fucking insufferable in every way. Oh. I just thought it was insufferable, like cloying and cutesy and maudlin and mawkish and i i I just it's on the mawkish side oh like just the syrup was just like dripping off the night and i don't mean the syrup that they get hit with in the face you know uh it's just (laughs) it was it was just such a chore i mean i and i gotta say you know i don't Ever, I got to be honest. I don't ever remember thinking anything either way, positive or negative, about Macaulay Culkin. I think he's fucking horrible. Hey, listen, I'll tell like, you what. Like as a child actor, like all that hoopla. Like looking at it now, I think if this came out today, you'd be looking at it and be going, "Who the fuck is this kid? He's terrible." Listen, you know? man, yeah. I I like this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still like this movie. Okay. That was the one major opinion that shifted for me this time. Really? Macaulay Culkin's a bad actor. I'm very surprised. Okay. Yo, he sucks. He sounds yeah. like he's reading the lines. And, <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, oh, it's so cutesy sometimes. Like they, he, How many times this movie does he fucking raise his eyebrows when he's oh excited about something? Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, yeah. He is the, uh, what is he? He's the least uh, talented Culkin, right? He is I mean. cute, though. <laughs> okay. I do find him cute. Um, I don't know. Is he the least talented Culkin? I, 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 I don't, don't know. know. I've seen Kieran and Rory, I think, in a couple of things, and I don't remember thinking anything really negative about them. Uh, look, 
Uh, yeah. Well, Macaulay has the charisma. Hey, ha- did you like Kieran in Home Alone? <laughs> he's, he's better than Macaulay. All right. He's the one who pisses the bed all the time <laughs> and seems fucking psyched about it. My favorite thing is like yeah. uh, when they're like, you're going to be sleeping with Fuller tonight. And like, yeah, I can't sleep with him. He pisses the bed. And then they like cut to Fuller with like a can of Coke, like just smiling like, yeah, I'm going to piss on you, motherfucker. Yeah, very strange. <laughs> very odd. Very odd. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, where were we? <laughs> I guess it's almost oh, like. I, I, look, I, I, I don't know how much. I can get into the Culkins on this podcast. Sure, yeah. Because um, I dated a girl <laughs> that um, the dude she dated before me was a Culkin. Mm. And I so remember this. I know a lot about the inner workings of the Culkin family. Interesting. And um, they're weird, but but she had nice things to say about most of them. Mm. Um, but uh, I just, uh, I mean, look, so I was into her, and mm. I then I found out she had just broken up with a Culkin. And I was mm. like, oh, fuck this. She's out of my league. <laughs> 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 and, uh, yeah. but... We still st- hung out and shit, and, and and I was like, I think she might be in my league, and and so, um, we got together, and I I'll just never forget. Oh wait, then I found out the Culkin she dated was Chris Culkin, the mm. the only non-famous Culkin. Okay. And so I was like, oh, maybe now I think she's in my league because at least it's Chris, right? Like she was he date- like an insurance salesman or something. No, 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 no. He's living off the Culkin family fortune, of course. Sure, sure. Um, yeah. So I was like, at least it's not Kieran. I can't compete with that right. guy. Right, right. Um, you know, fucking Igby over there. Right. And uh, so um, <laughs> I just remember that the first date I was on with her, she kept getting voicemails from this Culkin kid Telling her that she was like, I know you're out with a guy. I'm going to kill myself. And oh it's, my God. it's your fault. I'm going to kill myself. Oh, and my God. Yeah. So that was how that relationship started. And that's probably it's possibly part of the reason it didn't end great. Um, <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, I know a lot about the Culkins. Wow. I, I, I mean, Macaulay seems like an OK guy. Uh, I think he was married at the time. He's not anymore. Now he's in a Velvet Underground cover band that sings songs about pizza. Um, yeah, you mentioned that on our very first show. I did think. I? Yeah, they sing <laughs> songs about candy and yeah, you're our transcriber. Drug. That's um, right. The transcription. The transcription. You you uh, you said he changed all the drug usage words to uh, pizza. Yeah, pizza verbiage. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he popped up on the Jim Gaffigan show a couple times. Okay. I don't know, but yeah. uh, interesting. Okay, so that's your feeling on this movie. Now I want to go through it. A little bit chronologically, if that's okay. That's, that's fine. We'll talk less about Home Alone 2. Um, yeah, I don't care. Whatever okay. you got. Listen. John Williams' opening score and the opening logo with just the, the lone house with the light on and there's like a moon behind it. I think chilling. Yeah, we Genuinely go there. creepy. Uh, the visual, fine. Um... The score, not I. I did not. Okay, like. our, our resident John Williams expert, Henry Papali, just, who says just, his only original score is Jaws. No, 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 no. no. Um, yeah, I, I did say that once, but no, no, no. I think he's a great, as you, as I've said many times, he's a great, great, great film composer. But this is one of his most saccharine, tedious. Things. I think it's I, great. I, I think it's a great score. Yeah, there's also too much of it. It's it's, a, it's I agree always, with that. I agree with that. Yeah, it's always playing, you know. There's like every character has like his or her own theme. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They they've got their own light motif as as yeah. they say. Yeah. Yeah. Cuz he loves Wagner as we know and so Wagner had a light motif for so, all of his wait, characters. So. Who's he ripping off in this one? Oh, the most obvious one is uh Tchaikovsky. I mean, that's the nutcracker in the opening sequence with the the running around and the fast motion. 
Oh yeah, I mean yeah, that's it's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. I mean I don't know why they just didn't use the Nutcracker. I mean it it is the Nutcracker. In fact, when I heard it, I was like, I forgot Tchaikovsky. They used Tchaikovsky, and then I was like, wait. <laughs> I swear I'm not being funny. Like, I, and then I was like, "Wait a minute! No, no, he's just doing his little inversion thing where he just flips around the notes upside doozy." And yeah, it's you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, that I, part. I do. I do. Yeah, yeah, Nutcracker, right? Yeah, no, but I like the opening theme, and I like his theme for um, the burglars, the wet bandits. I, yeah. <laughs> Um, Na- one of them named, by the way, inexplicably named after one of the most famous characters in movie history. Um, Harry Lime. Who's who's that? Orson Welles in The Third Man. Really? Yep. <laughs> I didn't know that. It was immediately um, when I saw that I had to look it up and I was like, Harry Lime? Are they saying Harry Lime? Why would they do that? What's Very Marv's strange. last name? Albert? <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know. It's some Jewish name or something. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Because we don't find out, we don't really find out he's Jewish till the second one, right? He says like "Happy Hanukkah, Marv" or something like that. Yeah, well, he's Marv. He says "Happy Hanukkah." Right. right. Yeah. yeah. Um. All right. So very early on, we meet Old Man Marley, the next door neighbor. He's good. I liked him. Yeah. Who's um? You know, people in the neighborhood think he's like murdered like a thousand people, <laughs> but really he's just a sweet guy, and. uh that character and a lot of the supporting characters in this movie I'm um, really remind me of the work um, that Chris Columbus did on, like, uh, Goonies. Mm. Because there are so many little... It, it's like a little populated world, the town in Home Alone. Like, mm-hmm. I, I really like some of the small characters you meet, like Marley and... Like the the smoking Santa Claus, and, <laughs> that guy's funny. Yeah, yeah, or the that drinking guy's funny. Santa Claus, yeah, and and his his little bored elf, yeah, uh, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of good little little bits. Yeah, I liked the, uh, like I liked the, the grocery store clerk. I really like. Right, right, yeah. right. I liked Robert's Blossom. He was Marley. He he was a character actor. Uh, I I thought I would rec- have recognized him from more movies, but it seems like he was mainly a TV guy. But I knew him from Escape from Alcatraz and like bit parts like that. But I, uh, I know him from Home Alone. Right. Uh, he, he in that church sequence. If Macaulay Culkin wasn't in it, and maybe Robert's Blossom was just talking to God, I think that would have been a better scene because he's so good in it. And then they f- cut to Macaulay Culkin's overacting reactions. And... <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of that. But in terms of the populated world, I think you got to credit John Hughes with that even more, or the casting director. But I, I don't. I mean, that's. I don't even know if that's a Columbus. No, uh, thing. of course John Hughes has something to do with it. Yeah, uh, because yeah. Because all of his movies are. I mean, he has. Yeah, yeah. Every one of his movies takes place in Shermer, Illinois. And, right. Uh, and so. It's one of those things that, you know, the thing Kevin Smith ripped off where the different characters from different movies know each other. Like, if, if you, like, he had, like, a whole mythology mapped out where, like, Ferris Bueller, like, went to the same school as the <laughs> characters from The Breakfast Club. Oh, shit. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> but they didn't carry that out, did they? No, like, they, but there's little references, if you pay close attention in some of the movies, to some of the other oh. movies, Yeah. Didn't, I don't know. know that. Yeah, like That's Ducky cool. was friends with I don't know whatever. Um, Cameron. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> That's yeah, probably yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Um, so uh, let's talk about my favorite character in the Home Alone movies, Kevin's brother Buzz. I knew you were going to say that. Um, I God, knew it. God, I love this character and this actor who's still working today. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Hank, what's your superhero count on this one? Two. What are who are they? Uh oh, you got me, I guess, huh? <laughs> Maybe. I don't think I look. I don't think. Yeah, I bet you did because I didn't look up Buzz, okay. or if I did, I didn't find anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got. Um, I got. Do you want to just hear him now? Yeah, dude, yeah, just good. Yeah, I got Hope Davis. Yeah. Whoa. Can we just stop right now? I love Hope Davis. How the fuck is Hope Davis in Home Alone? Well, she was in Flatliners, too, which was the same year in a minor role. So I think this was like where she was just getting her her. She was just starting out in Hollywood. She she must be way older than I think she is. She is. She's like 52 now. She's still super hot. 
I know. She's gorgeous. Yeah. And she, 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 so she was already, she was like in her late 20s when she did this. Yeah, yeah. she's good on that Wayward Pines. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's awesome. I love yeah. her in about, about Schmidt, anything she's in. About Schmidt, she's, she's so good in that movie. Yeah, she's great. I'm and a so fan she, of a, um, a, a movie people don't talk about a lot from the late 90s. It's a real Miramax thing. Uh, what's it called? Next Stop Wonderland? Oh yeah, yeah I, I don't think I ever saw it, but I know exactly it's what you're talking about. It's a good little about. picture with Hope Davis at the center of it. And well, uh, she's well, she's one of the one the superhero because she's in Captain America: Civil War. She plays Tony Stark's mother, Maria Stark. Good lord, playing Tony Stark's mother. Yeah, man. I he, meanwhile, Downey's like older than she is. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's probably true. Um, yeah. But Hope Davis, she she pops up here as one of the. Um, She's working at the airport in France. With and a French she, accent? Yeah, with a French accent. There's no you, slouch. Just hire someone with a French accent. Why do you need Hope Davis? But, I mean, it was ha- I was happy to see her. Yeah, me sure. too. I, absolutely. Sure, it gave you something. <laughs> <laughs> it gave me hope. Oh, yeah. I like it. Uh, um, and, and I don't know if you heard, but the other superhero is John Heard. <laughs> Good one. John Hurd was in the Justice League New Frontier animated film. Yeah, the Darwin Cook thing. Who's in uh, that? Ace Morgan, whoever that is. Who? Ace Morgan? I don't know who that is. Um, so what do you got on me? I uh, Well, I've, I've got, and I knew this off the top of the dome, brother. Um, the kid who plays Buzz. Yeah. He was in that Agent Carter show. Oh, was he really? Yeah, a couple episodes. Uh-huh. He was really good, actually. Like, he was so good on that show, because he looks totally different now. Because um, yeah. he's like a grown-up, fat character actor with, like, a beard. And so I, yeah. like, IMDB'd, like, who's this actor? He's good. And yeah. I was like, holy shit, it's Buzz. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, so you did it, like, in reverse order. Yeah, like, I was yeah. watching Agent Carter, and I was really enjoying this actor. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Three. Yeah. Um, so Buzz, he's Kevin's older brother, real, real grouch, this guy, <laughs> and, uh, you know, Kevin's like, hey, can I sleep on, in your room, Buzz? And he's like, I wouldn't let you sleep in my room if you were growing on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> he's so good. Real and- good. Got the real good one-liners. You know, I had a feeling if they had given that kid, like, funny dialogue, he would have pulled it off. I think he did. I think he's funny even in the second one where, like, no one's funny. That's true. He, he he does have a way with, like, I think he even, like, as a teenage actor was probably like, all right, this is a stupid line, but I'm going to try to make it funny. He goes for it. And, yeah, and, But yeah. just, like, the whole character, I think, is well drawn. I love his bedroom with his tarantula and his yeah. giant iced tea poster. <laughs> um and uh, the best moment in the entire movie, and I think the Home Alone fans out there know what I'm going to say. Mm. When Kevin is searching through his shit and finds the picture of his girlfriend and says the best line in the movie, when Facebook still had like favorite quotes and shit, this was one of mine. Mm. Uh, Buzz, your girlfriend, woof. <laughs> That's it, buddy. And to I, me, I don't even remember that line. Buzz, your girlfriend, Wolf, is my Luke. I am your father because mm. people get that line wrong all the time. It's I'm your father, Luke. I'm your father. You know what I mean? Oh, I, yeah. Is it? Yeah, You're educating it, me here. It is. He says, people, I am your. Yeah, people always say Luke. I am your father. That's not a line from Star Wars, and uh, Star yeah. Wars fans get mad at that. My version of that is. People quote that line all the time as Buzz's girlfriend, woof. No, it is no. Buzz, your girlfriend, woof. All right. Good you clarified that. Yeah. yeah. Got and, that uh, out of my system. You know, I fell into that uh, Star Wars thing. I was always thinking that was the line because that's what everyone says. That's right. Not the line. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Interesting. Uh, so let's talk about some of the cool shit. Kevin gets up to while his family's away. Mm. Okay? Because he made his family disappear. Right. Am correct. I right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Correct. Um, Probably my favorite is um, the movie he watches. 
Oh yeah, uh, Angels and with Filthy Souls or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Angels with Filthy Souls, which is a takeoff on a real James Cagney movie that I've seen called Angels oh. with Dirty Faces. You've seen it? Yeah. Oh, uh, it's really? good. I I watched it because of Home Alone. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, and so they hired like real old old timey actors to like, yeah. do the scenes for angels with filthy souls and i think they're great yeah they are they're very funny yeah. i mean they're very good they're, they're, he, they're funny yeah 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 it's me snakes i got the stuff <laughs> i'm i could be with home alone like you were with <coughs> fucking fletch dude I know every line of this movie. Uh, you're good. Yeah, I don't think you've ever done this before. Yeah, uh, this is one of the only... You, you know I'm not a quoter. I can not quote the shit out of this movie. You can and are. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Wow. No, I don't mind. Yeah, and, then, mind. and then when he says, I'm going to shoot you on the count of ten. One, yeah. two, ten. Yeah. Yeah. yeah with the uh, pizza guy. Well, yeah, I don't love that scene, but the pizza guy is another one of those good little little characters that populate the movie yeah but um and i like that everyone knocks over that fucking little statue <laughs> they have in the front that's a good little detail but um but i don't i don't love that scene so much when he's just like pranking the pizza guy and mm -hmm. macaulay culkin's all excited who cares but um i just like when he's watching the movie with all the ice cream because <laughs> yeah. that's what i would fucking do that's what i would yeah. be doing if i was home alone at that age i i wouldn't be fighting First of all, I'd go to the cops immediately. Um, <laughs> second of all, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, he's supposed to be—he's supposed to be eight. Yeah. Um, so. but I sort of buy this movie. It, it makes no sense why he doesn't go to the cops in the second one. Yeah. Um, right. th this one works more for me. I, I can get on board, but uh, well, it's very. I mean, I didn't. I didn't get on board at all. I just figured there's no point in not getting on board. I mean. We're here. You're on board. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, what are you going to do? Start complaining about child endangerment laws and all that? And, you know, I mean, of course, like, you could sit here and pick that apart of me infinitely. You know, the whole thing is preposterous. So, but we're, we're here. We're in that universe. So, you know, got to deal with it. Okay. I'll give, I'll give it that. So I, I've been praising this movie. Let, let's take a break from that so you can shit on some more specifics. Um, what do you got? I don't really have, I mean, specifics, I just, I just, the only, like, bright spots for me were John Candy, every sequence he's in. Mm -hmm. Which um, is he, mercilessly short. I've, he doesn't show up until an hour in. What's mercilessly short? That he's John Candy's not, appearances. I want him, I, I want more John Candy. Oh, yeah, I want, yeah, right, right, me too. And, um. I thought the stuff with old man Marley was good. I mean, almost everything else, I just, I just found insufferable. And 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 I and I also didn't remember that the uh, whole. Um, I didn't remember how long the exposition was, like before he starts n beating the shit out of the criminals. Oh, that it's happens like way over late. an hour yeah, into the yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like I always remembered, like, oh, this is the whole movie. Him just beating these guys up. It's just because that's what people remember. That's kind of yeah. what Home Alone Two is. Yeah, but. but uh, yeah. But like, yeah, and so it just became, you know, Pesci and, and Stern are just, I mean, they are cartoon characters. And, and I don't think they are in the first one. I think well, Stern kind of is, but I think Pesci's playing it straight, mostly. Well, he, I mean, he is, but the stuff that's happening to them and their reactions to it are just, they're just not funny. It's just not funny. I, I, I. No, I think it's menacing. I think yeah, it's it is. genuinely it's, scary sometimes. It's sadistic, it's cruel, and, you know, these they guys aren't... They want to kill him. <laughs> well, they want to kill him, but eventually, at, at the beginning, all they are are just, like, harmless robbers who just steal shit from people's houses. I don't think houses. they're that harmless, though. I think Joe Pesci in that opening scene where he's, like, dressed as a police officer and he's got his gold tooth and shit. Oh, yeah, like, you think that's... It's, like, it's yeah. fucking... He's, like, playing his character from Once Upon a Time in America or something. <laughs> from Goodfellas, <laughs> I think that's all Joe Pesci can do. Like, um, I I saw an interview with like Chris Columbus where he said that he kept having to like direct Joe Pesci because when he'd get hurt, 
he would just immediately scream fuck every time. Oh, like that's that, funny. And, like, and he, he, like, we can't do that. <laughs> the outtakes for this would have been better than the movie. That would have been funny. I would love to see some of the Joe Pesci outtakes for this movie. I, want, did, did, uh, I wonder what was filmed first, this or Goodfellas? Yeah, because they're the same year, huh? Yeah, I think Goodfellas was a summer release. Not that the release date always coincides, but... I don't know. It might not even matter. He probably would have taken both roles, but uh, I mean, Goodfellas he's put him one into of the those stratosphere. Guys, and he won the Oscar. Yeah, he's one of those guys though that has weirdly been in very few things. Like if That's you look very up, true. if you look right. up on IMDb, is like twenty five credits or something. You're right. Even though he's been around since fucking the seventies. You're right. And uh, right. yeah, it's weird. It's just he's been in so many iconic movies. From yeah. I mean, Home Alone to. Goodfellas to Raging Bull to whatever to casino. Once Upon a Time in America to Casino yeah 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 uh, um you know yeah he had my a little, cousin Vinny my cousin Vinny yeah. yeah yeah after Home Alone he had a, a run where he was like in a few mainstream movies I think he made the most movies in the nineties and some of them are terrible yeah the, you, su- the super the super is really bad <laughs> eight heads in a duffel bag Ooh. Um, but the worst I've left for last which I saw. Not in theaters, but I think on pay per view. <laughs> Let's hear it. Gone fishing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> didn't I lend you the Joe Queenan book where he talks about going to see the matinee of Gone Fishing with his friend? I to don't see- remember that. Oh my God, people! If you're out there, it's um in the Joe Queenan book, Confessions of a Cineplex Heckler, and he talks about what's the saddest time and thing to do in the world or whatever. And he goes, he, I'm sorry, he goes by himself to a matinee of gone fishing just to see who would be in the theater. And his, Oh, I do remember it. this. Yeah. Oh, he, and he describes God. everyone that was in the theater. I was pissing my pants reading that. It was so good. But anyway, yeah. Oh my. But yeah, that's Pesci. So I don't know, man. I mean, I, you know, I just the movie just doesn't work for me. I I don't like the writing. I don't like the acting, with few exceptions, with like Candy and O'Hara and I, John Hurd. I, I think with many exceptions. Wait, wait a second. Like, but the dialogue is so terrible that it, it it interferes with the performances of everyone. But so, I think the performances are good enough that it overrides the dialogue. Okay. Yeah, I I don't quite agree with that because I and I think the biggest sufferer of that was Catherine O'Hara. Um, yeah, for yeah, me, I actually agree because Catherine yeah, O'Hara is hysterical. Yeah, like really right. one of the funniest people in the world. Absolutely, and like, um, and she but, can also play drama really well. Like, she, like her yeah. performances in the guest movies. The later ones, um, a mighty wind, and uh, what's the fucking Oscar one for your consideration? Perfect, yeah. uh, they're they're more melancholy than Guffman and Best in Show, and right. they really work. She's really good. I remember her getting Oscar buzz for for your consideration at the time. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's great, and I just don't like her. Her her lot her the the dialogue she's given she just can't overcome it and she's the the biggest example because she's the worried that. mom like yeah like she, she has to really sell that and so she's like the almost the only person in the movie not allowed to be funny right yeah, yeah. it's an odd so the movie for me just just does not work I was just bored to tears and just I thought the direction was just annoying and it was just like a it was like nails on a fucking chalkboard were you at all touched by the church scene where kevin talks to old man marley well i mentioned that i said what when he's talking when marley is talking by the way jacob marley is is that that, do we say that i I, I believe it's just old man marley i know that but obviously he's oh it's a yeah it's a christmas carol reference yeah yeah um yeah, sure. When he's like going on that little soliloquy about how his son doesn't talk to him and they don't get really into why. And I like that. Like, I like they don't delve too deep. He just kind of said, you know, very Hughesian. Yeah. But then, you know, Culkin has some fucking fortune cookie wisdom, you know, like an eight year old would uh, about, you know, and then it just kind of kind of st- grinds it to a halt. But, you know, that, yes, Robert, the Roberts Blossom, that actor, he's very good and he is touching and um my yeah. o- my overriding theory has always been that they don't talk because old man Marley thought it would be funny to tape his son's ass cheeks together. 
<laughs> wait, wait, that's um, <laughs> that's a sweet wait. Breakfast Club reference, ah, brother. Damn it. Yeah. Damn it. I was getting there, and my brain was just behind you. Yeah, <laughs> just behind you. Okay. Um. Nice. So once we get to the the battle between Kevin and the uh, the crooks, we'll let you talk about that for a little bit. Well, I will say that you know when he lays out that battle plan, like the, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um. I always wanted that as a poster when I was a kid. Sure. Yeah. Um. And, I mean, did you like any of the traps? Uh, did I like any of the traps? I mean, some of them get pretty, like, intense. Like, well, I, they're like they're like the you know Dutch and his crew trying to trap the predator. I mean, they're but they're more brutal. Yeah, they they're really brutal. Like, because all all they're trying to do in predator is catch him in a net. <laughs> no, man, Pesci fucking burns the shit out of his hand on that yeah i mean the knob. only one that's not uh potentially lethal is the micro machines laying out on the floor yeah right? or the uh it. just putting a tarantula on daniel stern's face well that would be lethal for me i'd have a fucking heart attack so yeah um and uh yeah but yeah daniel but they're stern, not lethal daniel compared stern, to the second one no they are fucking not that second one is he's a sociopath <laughs> in that movie but yeah he yeah. steps on a nail and, he, and the ornaments uh, yeah, that's pretty brutal. Um, yeah. All right, let's let's start to wrap up. But um, I will say I I have the second best line in the movie after "Buzz your girlfriend, Wolf," is when you know Macaulay Culkin climbs out the window and climbs into that treehouse on the yes. rope. Yes. And fucking Daniel Stern, <laughs> uh, Joe. First, they're looking for him. They they don't know where he went. Right. And Joe Pesci goes, where'd he go? And Daniel Stern goes, maybe he committed suicide. <laughs> That's a good line. It is funny, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like the, the uh, that's so retarded, the uh, shot where they're climbing to get him to the treehouse. And it, there's a shot of them, and it looks like they're about 10 feet off the ground. But when he cuts the rope, it's there's enough slack on that rope that they're <laughs> like about... 80 feet off the ground yeah where like and they you know, slam into the fucking house yeah like whoa i didn't know we were in a 12-story house here yeah. yeah that was a that was a fun one but uh, all right yeah. so home alone <laughs> i got an mvp and an lvp okay who are they um i'm going john candy mvp okay and i'm going lvp mac attack mac attack with the lvp brutal Yep. Okay. Um, I think it might have been a better movie with. I mean, it wouldn't have been probably, but with a, a different actor, might have been a little bit better. I don't know. I, I doubt it, though. Honestly, I doubt it. But how about you? Um, yeah. What if they got the kid from Picket Fences or something? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll go MVP. Old man Marley. Yeah, I was definitely. gonna go Pesh, but I'm 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 going Old Man Marley. That's a good um, one. LVP. I mean, hmm. I don't know. Well, you had a you had a big reversal. You know, I when did. You I did. I'm, I'll go Macaulay, but you know, only because I like so many of the little characters in this movie. Like uncle, the uncle and his wife are good, and I don't know. Uh, I, I I like Home Alone, man. I, I still like it. All right, star? Four. Mm, all right. I'm giving it two. <laughs> Only because you're giving the second one one. Well, hold on. <laughs> uh, it, it gets two stars because of basically John Candy and, and Old Man Marley. Sure. I mean, that, they, they, they deserve something and, and you know, they're trying. So it, it's, could, it's... Could you say, honestly, it has its moments? maybe okay maybe. Yeah, that's what couple, i wanted there you go there's a couple of moments a couple yeah there you go mm -hmm. yeah yeah i've i've it's up there in, in movies i've not enjoyed watching in our podcast for sure it's in the <laughs> probably the top uh top five but uh all right well i'll tell but, you what won't be home alone <laughs> 2 lost in new york <laughs> Yes. The team's back together. Chris Columbus directing, John Hughes writing, making the same movie, <laughs> just in New yep. York City. Yeah. 
Um, released November twentieth, nineteen ninety two. Same exact weekend. Uh, budget of twenty million. Box office three hundred fifty nine. Still gigantic hit. Yeah. Um, it wasn't the number one film of the year, but it was the number two film of the year. Mm, nineteen ninety two. Second right. woman. <laughs> no. What are the other? What are the other four on that list? Batman Returns. That is number three. Home Alone two made slightly more money. Boom. Mm. Um. 92. My favorite Batman movie. I know. Uh, uh, Play the game with me. Okay. Number one is animated. 1992 animated. And racist. And racist. Yes. Well, I know Toy Story wasn't out yet. That was a few years ago. That's not racist. No, and it wasn't racist. (laughs) I was getting to that. An animated movie from 1990. Oh, uh, The Lion King? No, but that's a good guess. I think that was later, 94 or something. Uh, Aladdin. That's it. Aladdin, the number one movie of 1992. All right. All right, so we have two Home Alone 2, three Batman Returns. Number four, I'll tell you what, a sequel to a franchise that I... uh, it's, It's the third one in the franchise. That I did not think was this big still <laughs> by the third one. Ooh. And Ooh. and here's another hint. Shares an actor with Home Alone 2 Lost in New York. Wow. Uh-huh. Um, okay, well, uh, holy shit, man. You've gotten, I'm thinking, oh, wait. Shares an actor with, uh, home, with home Alone 2? I'm saying Home Alone 2. Yeah. Um, uh, Tim Curry? No, no, it's Home Alone 1 also. <laughs> if that helps. Uh, uh, well, not Catherine O'Hara, not John Candy, not John Hurd. Uh, I don't know, man. I Lethal know. Weapon 3. Oh, Pesh. Yeah. Oh, wow. The Pesh Meister. That, was, that made that much money? Could you believe that? Number 4. I, I wow. can't believe how big that series was. Who could possibly care by the third one? Yeah, I didn't. Me neither. Uh, and, and, num- and I- number five, a genuinely good movie mm. uh, featuring uh, your favorite actor of all time. <laughs> a genuinely good movie featuring my favorite actor of all time. Yeah, I know you're playing around, uh, or maybe you're not, but is he actually one of my favorite actors of all time? He's your favorite actor of all time. Jack Nicholson? <laughs> yes. 1992. Oh, I'm ash- I'm ashamed. Well, uh, I I know you it's not Hoffa. It's not. I know it's not Hoffa. No, that didn't that make did... money. No, um, I I, I I give up. Well, listen, I'll tell you something about this. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> okay, of course. <laughs> Love that movie. Oh yeah, yeah. A few good men. A few sure. good men. Okay. Boy, I didn't know that made that much money. Yeah, Number big hit, five. Big hit. Tom Cruise at the height of his powers. That's true. Um, all right. Listen. Home Alone two. Lost in New York. They're going on another trip. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Takes place one year later. <clears throat> yeah, a very uh, quick exposition. Yeah, they are flying to florida this time kevin's in tow he makes it to the airport Uh, but he's fiddling around with some batteries in his talk boy which is a toy that lets you record shit it's basically a tape recorder yeah (laughs) and uh fucking he loses track of his dad and ends up on a plane to new york and in this time this is a conscious effort not to find his family because in the first one he's scared he wants right. his family back. Right. Uh, in the second one, no. He's like, well, fine. I don't want to go to Florida anyway. They don't even have Christmas trees there, buddy. Yep. And, and he's got a ton of cash and credit cards with him. Oh, that's right, because he has his dad's bag. Yeah. Because that had the batteries in it, too. Right. By the way, his dad, who carries a purse, which actually confused me because I thought he had his mother's purse with him. No. And. Yeah, it was very odd looking. It looked like a purse. And yeah. I was like, he keeps saying his dad's bag. What kind of bag is that? Yeah, anyway. Anyway. Subtle detail. Sure. He's got yeah. this bag. So got he's like, money. he's like, motherfucker, 
I'm going on vacay in the Big yep. Apple, son. Yep. So he takes a cab ride from old JFK. Yep. Uh, to the Plaza Hotel because this movie is brought to you. <laughs> yep. By our president elect. Oh man. Donald Trump all over this movie. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so he stays in the plaza the entire time. The whole movie is an ad for the Plaza Hotel. <laughs> Every time anyone enters any room in the Plaza Hotel, they're like, oh my god, this is fucking unbelievable. Yep, yeah. And I've been inside the Plaza Hotel before. Yeah, it's all yeah. right. Uh, <laughs> exactly. It's very gaudy. It's a hotel. Um, yeah. And uh, he even runs into Donald Trump. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which I right. had remembered as being a big, like a closer shot cameo, like a more, like, you know what I mean? Like, it was a much more. Uh, it's just a drop it, by. Yeah, I didn't remember that. I had it in my head like he had, like, bent over and said something. And it was like a close up, which, of course, now he would probably demand. But oh, of course. Then. But, but I mean, that being said, the president elect of the United States is in Home Alone 2 Lost in New York. It's true. <laughs> we should say that. I don't know of another movie besides Bedtime for Bonzo where you can actually say <laughs> that uh, that happened. I know, uh, I know. Speaker of the ho- former Speaker of the House Tip O'Neill, after he retired, was in Dave. That's after he retired, though. I feel like guys. And, are well, okay. To while do he that. was Speaker, he was in Cheers. Oh, remember that episode where he sits at the bar and Norm doesn't re- realize it's actually Tip O'Neill? Yeah, I do remember that though. Yep. Yeah, that's anyway. a good poll. Thanks, man. Yeah. But yeah, but the uh, president elect, you're right. I don't there's no there's nothing comparable to it and never will be, hopefully. Um, I don't want to see my president elect. Henry, let's, you know, let's well, he's our last president. So it will true. never happen again. That's a very good point. Mm-hmm. I defer. It's all ending soon. Yeah. Um all right. So <laughs> let it be an arms race. All right. Um <laughs> Listen. So Trump shows up. Kevin asks him for directions, and then um, Trump gives him directions, and then we see Kevin walk away. But Trump's like, "Who's this kid?" You see, like a look on his face. Right. And I, take. I think I have two theories, two possible theories for that moment. All right. Uh, one, Trump wanted more screen time, and they only gave him one line. Mm-hmm. So. He turns around, and it's very weird because it kind of just looks like he's checking out Kevin's ass. <laughs> he's like, look at this. That's pretty Jesus tight. Christ. And uh, I could do some damage with that sweet cherry rosebud. Oh, you are, uh, and- <laughs> you are a piece of work, man. But um, <laughs> my other theory is a lot of people look at Kevin like that in this movie. Like, people on the streets in New York are constantly get like, What's this kid doing here? And it's right. like, I, I live in fucking New York. No one <laughs> gives a shit. Kevin could be on the street waving his dick around and people wouldn't give him a second look. That is very true. Yeah. Yeah. You're very right. No one cares. No one could possibly care. It's the city that never sleeps nor ever cares. Yeah. This yeah. is a city that ignores everything. This is not a double take city. No. It's not, like, we're not in Omaha, Nebraska. I mean, unless we're legitimately seeing Donald Trump, and Kevin doesn't seem to give a shit about that. No. (laughs) He gives him the amount of attention that he should be given, pretty Uh, much. Yeah. Yeah. So I I will, (laughs) good one. I will say that the the Trump presence in this movie is not limited to the Plaza Hotel and Trump's appearance in this movie. Hmm. Because um, Harry and Marv... Who have recently escaped from prison? Yeah, <laughs> they really are just cartoon characters in this movie. They might as well be like, you know, <laughs> chained to a giant ball and wearing right. like sure. black and Where white striped clothing. I was just gonna say, yeah, yeah. Just, but, right, right, yeah. Um, and What's their connection? They go ice skating at one point. Yeah, at Rock the Rock old Center. Wolman. R- they're not in Rockefeller Center. They're at the Wolman Rink in oh. Central Park, which oh, is well done. owned by. Our president-elect, Donald the Trump. Trumpster. Yeah. That good point. That's right. That's right. I, I was, my head was kind of turned for some of the movie just looking out the window. So Understood. I, I, because, by the way, <laughs> Home Alone, 
the first one at least moves a little bit. It's paced okay. Mm. Home Alone 2 is two hours. Yeah, it's long when I saw that running time. Oh, Holy man. fuck is it too long. Yeah, yeah it's, yeah. it's a brutal length for a Home Alone yeah, movie. Yeah, it really like, is. It's a brutal length for a superhero movie. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you think that's usually a brutal length for any movie. <laughs> nine, nine, 90 minutes is the correct length for a movie, by the way. <laughs> I watched Hell in High Water this weekend, which I loved, and that yep. that was an hour 40, and I was like, that's good. I feel like Perfect. if you're a really good movie, you could you could get the extra 10. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Coming from the guy who uh, two of his top five favorite movies are Magnolia and Once Upon a Time in America. <laughs> yeah. One of them that takes two viewings. I, I am the biggest hypocrite in the world about and, that. And role. when they were both on video, weren't they? Were both two? I had the video. Of yeah, Magnolia. me it was too. Two, yeah, two double tapes. double VHS. And isn't Once Upon a Time in America still two discs? Yeah, it's two D- DVDs. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. I well lent I lent that movie to two people that I'll never get it back from. <laughs> God okay. damn it! I need to rebuy that. We've all done that. Yeah. All right, so uh, <coughs> you know he's in New York. He's in New York. First stop, Twin Towers. <laughs> oh man, that was tough. <laughs> oh baby, man. those. I was on. You you've been to the Twin Towers, right? Oh yeah, I've, I've been all over those those You're dead up there. buildings. You were up there. I was up there, and I just immediately thought, uh, besides 9-11, I actually just remembered, like, oh, yeah, I remember that view. I, I, and it. I thought... I was young when I was up there, so... Yeah. I thought this movie happened, it, it's 1992? When was yeah. the first World Trade Center bombing? Right around here, right? A year later. Yeah. Yeah, good point. Yeah, Kevin yeah, I was thought you were about to peril. ask me. I thought you were about to go, when was 9-11? <laughs> no, that I know. I was gonna be like, I think it was two thousand one. Pro, I think so. I'm not sure. Um, yeah. So, I mean, but they are all over this movie. Even the logo, you know, you know how it the it's the opening logo is the exact I, same thing with the fucking little house and the moon. But in this one, it's situated between the twin towers. Boy, that house is in trouble. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, baby, that house is in trouble. That house doesn't stand a chance. <laughs> and our new and our also our other resident american superhero rudy giuliani is not uh, around yet right this is pre is it pre uh giuliani era oh well, yeah i think we're i think we're ed Koch still yeah that's Dave why there's ho- that's why there's hookers on the street right it's <laughs> yeah. definitely i think it's ed uh i think it's david dinkins at this point new be, york yeah New York's still a shithole, essentially. Yeah, by the way, there are hookers in this Home Alone movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Right, um, that's that's the New York I remember and love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, They're just walking around. I'm telling you. In, in Manhattan. Sure. Yeah. Jason's there still, probably. <laughs> yeah, they're letting Jason walk around, <laughs> kicking, kicking boom boxes around, yeah. <laughs> saving girls from heroin injections. Yeah, <laughs> why not? Would you oh. say Al-Qaeda was the new wet bandits <laughs> oh, uh, anyway um, oh okay um, i don't know i think these thieves took about as much punishment as al-qaeda took from us oh yeah bricks to the head and talk about torture we'll get Ooh. let's get to that man oh um, man i mean but first we got let's talk about some of the plaza hotel stuff yeah, and the fake FAO Schwartz, which I really remembered as being FAO Schwartz. You mean Toy Duncan's chest? What is that about? Okay, this listen. Mo- this movie couldn't afford to get FAO Schwartz on board? Yeah, they really should have. What is the story with well, that? Well, listen, Trump doesn't own FAO Schwartz. Good point. Um, I-, I have an issue with the design of Duncan's toy chest because... Uh, it Chicago? It, no, be- <laughs> well, yes. But it looks like it says Toy Duncan's chest. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. Drives me nuts every time. I thought that, too. I thought that, too. I was like, wait. Du- oh, Duncan's toy chest. Okay. So, yeah, I guess we could get to Duncan's toy chest before the Plaza Hotel. So, um, you know, Kevin is using this credit card, by the way, a Visa credit card, held to the camera every time it's used, um, nice. with reckless abandon. 
And yeah. so he. Well, takes, they had to compete with American Express because these were the days when American Express had those ads. You know, don't leave home without it. Yeah. By the By the way, Pepsi is all over the first Home Alone movie. They've switched to Coke for Home Alone. Sure too. have. Yeah. Sure have. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he takes a um, a, a limo. And he's in the back of the limo eating his very own cheese pizza. Um, <laughs> and uh, then he's like, where's the toy store? And the, and the limo driver's like, I know just the place. Yep. You think he's going to F.A.O. Schwartz, but no, he's going to Toy Duncan's chest. <laughs> and <laughs> what Toy Duncan's <laughs> chest is, is we are told a five floor toy store That's where big. you can play with any toy in the store <laughs> and um it's the day before christmas and oh. there are no lines the no th- not that crowded no, i noticed that no too. no it's very crowded there's people all over the store but well, when kevin goes to pay he's able to talk to this cashier for an hour that's a very good point the uh, famous character actor eddie bracken Sure, and Eddie Bracken plays our friend Duncan. He seems to be the only employee of his toy store as he is ringing up people. Sure. Yeah. Because the CEOs of these places usually are at the register. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, Yeah. definitely. We know that. Yeah. Uh, Duncan, you see, on Christmas Eve, which obviously is the biggest night of of the year for a toy store... Gives a hundred percent of his money <laughs> to a children's hospital, and he doesn't just donate it; he leaves it in the cashier overnight, Good and move. then walks it over himself the next day. Good move. Um. Yeah. So Harry and Marv, who are cartoon characters now, Harry's a cartoon character. Marv is just retarded. <laughs> They, I'm like, it's a Tom and Jerry cartoon. I'm yeah. lightheaded right now from <laughs> ripping on this movie. Legitimately, I don't have a seltzer and I need one. Oh man! Um, oh. Go get a seltzer. No, can, I'm not. I'm not giving you. You're, you're done with Henry's minute alone. We're never <laughs> doing that again. I thought they were well do- uh, well received. Yeah. Ugh. Or they weren't received at all. So you, I don't know. No what one ever about. said anything to me. Yeah. About them. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, so I'll take where that was I? Man. So Henry, Henry. Ha- oh, I meant Harry. Harry and Marv. There are these little houses that I guess you can buy in this mm-hmm. toy store. Mm-hmm. And Harry and Marv are like, "Great plan. We'll stay overnight." Obviously, this store only has one employee, its owner. So he's yeah. not gonna like check to see if anyone's still on the floor at the end it's of the day. It's a good score. It's a good score <laughs> yeah. by all accounts. So they stay in the houses at closing so as to steal all the money for the orphans. Because if Harry and Marv weren't evil enough, they, they can't just be robbing a house in this movie. Right. They have to be robbing a toy store on Christmas Eve where all the money is meant for orphans. And not in a safe, as you pointed out. <laughs> no, just in a cash. An old-timey just, cashier. It's yeah, one of those leave, it, giant leave it in ones. the 1935 It's a Wonderful Life cash register. Oh, yeah. is that garbage screenwriting? <laughs> John Hughes, man. I mean, John Hughes still had some a little bit of wit left in that first Home Alone. It is gone in a flood of cynicism in this Yeah, he's, he's phoning it in. I mean, come on. Phone alone. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that would have been my Henry's Corner joke, and then there would have been radio silence. Sure. Yeah. Um, so they they stay there, they steal it, but uh, look who's looking at them. Harry and Marv, they fi- they see him, they see his uh, backpack, it says McAllister. First of all, the second Harry and Marv escape from prison, shouldn't Kevin McAllister be under 24-hour police surveillance? I would think so. I would think <laughs> yeah. so. Old man Marley's got to be murdered by now. <laughs> They killed that motherfucker. Yeah, because he kind of, he, well, he helped uh, catch him. Yeah, hitting him with the shovel, so. Yeah. Robert's, wasn't, en- wasn't enough to knock him out this time. Robert's definitely no longer Blossom at this one. Oh. Uh, uh, oh, you skipped over the pigeon lady, by the way, which happened we'll, intermittently. We'll get to her. There's so many goddamn characters in this movie. Yeah. Because I uh, before we get to her, and she's a nightmarish horror show. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, well, can we talk about the other villains in this movie, which are sure. the staff of the Plaza Hotel? Yes. Uh, so you got your Tim Curry. He is, this is the prime Tim Curry. I mean, yeah. it's not the prime of him being good. Right. But, I mean. People still knew who he was. I remember him being everywhere in the early 90s yeah me too well i remember him from legend you know he's the devil in, in that and then he's just in some doesn't he show up in uh, a couple of burton films or something too uh, he well he's um is he not batman returns i think he is i yeah. have that in my head but i'd have no idea of, of what he's in what he's past. in clue the movie Right. Yeah. Well, that was ten years. The, the long. Oh, that's eighty six. You're right. So in the early nineties, oh, he's no, fucking, no. Isn't... Clue the movie is like eighty two, man. No, it's eighty six. Don't test me on Clue the movie. I won't. You're right. I'll give it to you. Um, not... we have Rob Schneider. Wait, wait. I'm not done. Tim, I, the, Tim Curry, uh, by the way, I believe maybe same year was Scrooge in uh, Muppet Christmas Carol. Ooh. Is that right? I don't know. That's a movie I feel like everyone talks about on the internet and like around Christmas. Like people have seen that like a hundred times. Not and me. I've seen it once. I don't think I've ever seen it. That's like a, yeah. become a Christmas classic. I I only need one Scrooge. I need two Scrooge movies. Bill Murray and George yeah. C. Scott. Nope. Who? The uh, Alistair Sim, the original one. Ah, uh, yeah, that, you're right. That is better. That's a great one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. So, yeah, Rob Schneider. <laughs> who, who, who has an added significance now because he's been in the media a lot because he's an ultra, ultra, ultra conservative Republican Trump supporter, yeah, ironically. I know. I know. Ain't that something? Yeah. Rob Schneider. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. He was a thing for like a couple of days. Hating gay people. All right. Yeah. <laughs> the hate stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Making copies. <laughs> well, Rob, I'm alone too. I, I will say, <laughs> Rob Schneider, as much as he's gone horribly off the rails in the years since, starting with probably Deuce Bigelow European Gigolo, or maybe Deuce Bigelow One. Yeah, I guess we should cover those movies. Sure. Um, uh, remember the cover of European Gigolo where, like, no. he's sitting there and. The, the Leaning Tower of Pisa is behind him, but it's situated in a way that makes it look like it's his dick. Nope. Yeah, that's a great cover. Nice. Um, anyway, I like him in this movie, though, because he, this is him during his SNL years when I was right. a big fan of Rob Schneider. So this, sure, is, sure. this is prime Schneider, <laughs> if there saying. is such a thing. If there's such a thing, it's right there. It's and this right is when there. he was rocking that gorgeous pompadour on his head. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, he's pretty fun in, in this movie. I almost said funny, but I switched it to fun. That's a good change. Um, yeah. And uh, I'll tell you, possibly one of the most 90s things to ever happen in a movie mm. is Macaulay Culkin tipping Rob Schneider with fruit stripe gum. <laughs> wow. How about that for 90s? It didn't occur to me. Yeah. yeah. Is that what it was? was yeah. It you, ever, type? you ever chew fruit stripe? I don't think so. I think that gum only existed in the 90s. It was a big uh -huh. deal for me, though, for a kid. Sure. It was stripy, and the mascot was a zebra. I, I don't remember that at all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, catch, you catch Ali Sheedy. Yeah, she popped up at the airport, right? Yeah. Yeah. A little... In the Hope Davis role. Who's doing who the favor there, Ali Sheedy or John Hughes? <laughs> oh, ouch. That's my question. That's not nice. <laughs> Love Ali Sheedy. I do uh, too, but I mean, what was she doing in the 90s? I gotta say, that might have been a mutually beneficial thing. Could be. Although uh, she had just starred in Only the Lonely a year prior, and that was a little bit of a hit. So she was still, like, making movies. Making movies! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, doing favors. Alright, you want to talk about the, the pigeon lady? <laughs> Pigeon lady, so, and then we got to get to Uncle McAllister's uh, brownstone. Oh, my God. Well, yeah, we will. Uh, there's so much to talk about with this movie. It's so bad, dude. Brenda Fricker, the pigeon lady from My Left Foot. And uh, Mike, the Myers, old man Marley and, and Mike Myers' mom in So I Married an Axe Murderer. I, I really do like Brenda Fricker, I got to say. She's a good actress, and she's actually good in this movie. It's just I the agree. role is 
awful. Agreed. And yeah, so she, yeah, she is the old man Marley. She's just sort of like the old like sort of elderly person that at first Kevin is scared of but then learns to appreciate. And then unlike old man Marley, she has no cathartic uh ending for herself. She's oh. she's lectured yet again by young Kevin on the values of friendship and she in turn lectures him and then at the end still alone doesn't yeah, reunite with anybody it it is weird she she so she's a homeless lady who um is friend to the pigeons right she's got pigeons all over her she is a freak show <laughs> and, and i don't think kevin should be talking to this lady <laughs> she's fucked up like this lady like kevin's lecturing her like give your heart to someone right like, she's not doing that this lady is dying on a park bench in a pool of her own blood <laughs> and shit <laughs> and pigeon waste yeah why do you think she hasn't given her heart to someone she, she doesn't have the heart to tell kevin she's been a fucking heroin addict for 20 years a well-fed heroin addict though yeah, yeah it's true she kind of like fletch yeah. Well, it's so weird. Kevin's like, you want to get some cocoa to this lady? And she's like, I know just the place. And they go to Carnegie Hall. Like, where are you getting fucking cocoa on the roof of Carnegie Hall? I want to know how she has such a sweet pad right above the the symphony in Carnegie Hall. Yeah. How is that not being regulated? I, want, like... I live there. <laughs> yeah, totally. She's oh like, my God. I've heard the best music here. Ella Fitzgerald, so. Count Basie. Pavarotti. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, all right, you had me at first there. Yeah, um, but of course they have to listen to John Williams' syrup, so they didn't oh, even get Oh, yeah, the... John Williams with a cameo in this movie. Oh, I didn't catch that. Was, was he conducting? It, was, I believe he was conducting. I'm not 100% sure on that. I, I don't know that at all. Okay. I, I don't know. I've seen him conduct, so I, I don't know, but I, I never saw. I didn't catch that. But you got to listen to his crap score. So well, he—it's not his score. He—he he, well, maybe it is at that point. He's conducting. Um, he the, his, his arrangement of no, something. no, but he—it's his arrangement of the song he wrote for this movie. There you go. Because that first song he wrote for the first movie, I believe it's called "Somewhere in My Memory." Mm-hmm. That was nominated for a Golden Globe and an Oscar. So they were like, let's fucking lightning's going to strike twice, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got this song called Distant Star in this movie, which plays every time like, you know, Kevin like looks out the mirror a couple times and like sees a star in the distance. Looks out of a mirror. Um, dude, I get the words window and mirror mixed up and it was bound to happen on this podcast. I, I didn't know you were a dyslexic. I have a weird thing with those two words. Also, huh. umbrella and banana. <laughs> sometimes when i'm playing like mario kart and yeah. like i get someone to spin out i'm like yo i fucked you up with my umbrella yeah slipping on them umbrella peels <laughs> yeah 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 so he's looking out a window excuse yeah. me it's raining out get your bananas <laughs> <laughs> yeah and there's that hard distant star plays and he says like good night mom and then it like fades into the mom oh. in florida and she's like good night kevin vomit so bad Vomit. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> oh man. Um. Woo! And so. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So Kevin, we find out through exposition, has an uncle. It's who they were going to visit in Paris in the first movie. Oh, I didn't remember that. Yeah, but it, it, he's also got an apartment that's under renovation. <laughs> So fucking stupid. Real renovation <laughs> in, man. in New York. It is. Uh, it's there's holes in the floors. <laughs> it is a wreck of this place. I think Catherine O'Hara brought it over from the set of Beetlejuice because this place is. Uh, wow. I mean that's that not house in Beetlejuice is never under the kind of disrepair this thing. No, is. and it's and it's under disrepair. Yeah. yeah. Um. So Kevin goes over to see if his uncle's there because at, at least fucking talk to someone go to a cop right. any cop there's cops all over the city yeah he's he's yeah. by fucking central park the entire time there's horses rolling around with cops <laughs> <laughs> god damn it yeah and, but no he goes to see his uncle rob 
<laughs> and uh, they're not there, and they have this brownstone in like the upper 60s on the east side. So we find out Kevin has a, an absurdly rich uncle. <laughs> Yeah, absurd. Absurd, because he's he's trolling around the house in Paris too, and he's yep. renovating this thing fully. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I'm still lightheaded, and uh, <laughs> I'm gonna pass out by the end of this podcast. So that's the right reaction. Um. So anyway, I mean, he foils Harry and Marv's plan by he he throws a brick through the window of Toy Duncan's chest. And then <laughs> he fucking... <laughs> that sounds painful. <laughs> and he takes Polaroids <laughs> of them. And then he just has to, like, carry on with the Polaroids. Henry, I'm giving you Henry's minute. I really need something to drink. I'm, I'm literally... All I'm right. having, like, hot <laughs> go flashes. Ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. All right. All right. So we're taking uh, a little break so Dan can get some seltzer, but he's not exaggerating. I mean, this fucking place, he throws a brick with a note attached saying to uh, Eddie Bracken there, uh, Mr. Toy Duncan here, I'm. Uh, this is for you. You had some robbers uh, about to rob you, and uh, I, I helped you to save Christmas, and please give all the money, like you said, to the, uh, to the children. And I think we get even some cutaways of a children's hospital uh, because it was already, you know, cloying enough. So now we have to see these poor sick kids staring out the window hopelessly uh, and Marvin and Harry try to ruin their dreams. But Mac attack saves the day and starts the, and then they chase him. I'm back. What'd you talk about? I, I held the fort. I All right, think. good, good. Uh, yeah, so are we uh, talking about Kevin, like, <clears throat> battling them yet? Yeah, we made it. I, I walked our audience through the transition from uh, him breaking the window to them essentially forgetting about the money pretty much and chasing him to their brownstone. You know what the worst trap in this movie is? What's that? Remember that part where he buys pearls from a street vendor and then drops them oh, on the ground? Yeah. And they, like, slip and, like, break their heads on them? Like... If you drop pearls on a fucking city street, no one is possibly <laughs> slipping on them. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Yeah. Well, what's the most brutal, though? The bricks. Of... The fucking bricks. Yeah, there's no count. There's and, no question. First of all, Marv's head should be crushed, <laughs> and Kevin should be in a juvenile detention facility. Absolutely. Just, because clearly the events of the first movie damaged this fucking kid to sure. the point where now he just wants to be on his own. He's got, like, withdrawal when he's in his fam with his with fucking family. Right. And uh, so he gets to New York, and then he's just like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to murder these guys. I'm going to kill them. Yeah, I mean. He, he won't throws, talk to the police. Uh, how many bricks? Oh, my God. I think, like, four or five. I mean, one, you're dead. Two... You're, we're in, like, Walking Dead territory, like smashing with Lucille, you know? It, yeah. Marv should be street pizza at this point. By the but. way, right after that, <coughs> he's using a nail gun, right? Or a staple gun? Either way. Something and, like that, And yep. Marv just Either gets way. a nail right in the dick, which is bad enough. But then he gets one in the face! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, then he un this unleashes kid, a pipe. This kid should not be allowed on the street. He is willing to stab people in the face. Yeah, he's terrifying. Should have been released at Halloween. Mark yeah. gets electrocuted at one point and literally turns into a skeleton for a second. <laughs> There's a couple of moments like that. Um, like, uh, they really... Um, <laughs> it's The first movie, the, <clears throat> the traps were relatively realistic. Right, relatively. Relatively. The second movie, they really are just making a fucking Tex Avery cartoon. Um, yeah, yeah. And because there's that moment where Marv gets electrocuted and his hair stands on end and then he turns into a skeleton for a second. And there's also a weird thing in this movie where anytime something's like flying at them, like when he throws the paint cans or whatever, or the, you know, he throws the, the toolbox down the stairs or whatever. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, yes, yes. Do you, did you notice that, like, 
right as the impact happens, there's a voiceover that is neither Daniel Stern nor Joe Pesci, but mm. it's somebody. It's just a voice that goes, "Oops." No. Yeah, and 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 a couple times it goes, "Uh oh." <laughs> what the fuck is that? Uh oh. oh it, boy, it's just I... Chris Columbus being fucking horrible. Oh man! Um, wow. Didn't catch that. So that's that. I mean, it's 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 a fucked up movie. Kevin finally calls the police an hour and forty minutes into this movie, and yeah. um, he says, "Follow the explosion or whatever." The firecrackers. <laughs> yeah, that he bought in Chinatown, of course. Yeah, which didn't really make sense at the time, but you you you, you think like, well, those will be used later, and yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. fucking. Yeah. Um, so Har and Marv are chasing him, and he. They pull out a gun on him, which I think is a little too much. Like in the first movie, they hold him against a wall. It's a family film. And yes. they're yes. like, and Harry's like, I'm going to bite off each one of your fingers or whatever. Yeah. In this yeah. movie, they just fucking, th- you know, hold a gun against his face. And then try to shoot a uh, pigeon lady. But it's the uh, gun is uh, caked with uh, residue from every substance known to man. That they yeah, because he like I, you know he like splashed them with like paint varnish. And shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, but whatever. Uh, the pigeon lady saves him. The cops come and arrest them, and the day is saved. And uh, and then the family comes, and they all stay at the beautiful Plaza Hotel. <laughs> Then the next day, I mean, good lord, I could just describe this movie. I don't even have to make jokes. That's how bad it is. And yeah. um, Kevin, you know, the family wakes up um, in the Plaza Hotel suite, yes. and there's presents all over. Okay, and those are from Duncan as as a token of appreciation for Kevin um, breaking his fucking storefront. Um, so, he can, so he can lose more money on the yeah, night he made none. That's right. That money can't go to the children's hospital, by the way. Fix your window, buddy. Um, yeah, it's true. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. The big mirror. Shut up. <laughs> oh, that's embarrassing. Um, yeah, so uh, Kevin does not get arrested for um, murdering two people and uh, lighting off fireworks in a wooded area. And, um, th- but so anyway, so, yeah, the presence, I lost my train of thought for a second. Okay. Um, it annoyed me that Catherine O'Hara and John Hurd were staying in like the, the biggest, like the master bedroom mm. of the Plaza hotel suite. Mm. Let the uncle and his wife have that suite. Their kid isn't some piece of shit. Who's always getting <laughs> lost. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And then they start giving out presents. Kevin immediately runs away to hang out with the prison lady. Uh, the prison lady. The pigeon lady. <laughs> Same he, difference. He can't be with his family for two goddamn seconds. No. Um, no. And Like and, this movie, they're insufferable, apparently. And that's the movie. Yeah, that's a wrap. Um, all right. Two Home Alone notes that I didn't get to that I wanted to. Okay. Uh, are you an Adventures of Pete and Pete guy? I've heard of it. All right, yeah. that's one of my favorite shows of all time, and uh, the the um, the redheaded cousin. Okay. You know that kid? He's in both of them. He went on right. to be like the lead character of that show. All right. Anyway, uh, good, for good for him. And um, I'll tell you what, Buzz still great in part two. Mm-hmm. We didn't talk at all about the stuff in Chicago with um, Kevin performing in the choir, <laughs> and. <laughs> But he has a solo because, of course, right. even though right. Macaulay Culkin can't sing, and right. um, or act, and right. Buzz thinks it's funny. He they have these little candles, yeah. these fake candles, sure. and he, so he holds them up behind Kevin's ears to make his <laughs> ears light up, and the whole audience the goes, audience. yeah, goes. Nuts with laughter. Like, I've never seen anybody in any room kill with an audience as much as Buzz <laughs> is killing with this candle gag. Is it the same audience that laughed when Carrie got pig's blood thrown <laughs> on her? Because it's <laughs> it very similar. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. And then yeah. Kevin punches Buzz and like ruins the entire choir. And and yeah. I, I think he should get punished. You know, the, Buzz, Buzz should. No, or? Kevin should. Mm. Yeah. The thing to do in that situation, you know, his parents see what Buzz is doing, so they're gonna punish Buzz. Kevin, right. just wait till after the choir. You're the innocent. Yeah. All right, that's yeah. always annoyed me. Anyway, Home Alone 2, Lost <laughs> in New York. What are you giving this thing? One star. Me too. Um, I almost went two. No I, I, I can't. It's, no it's horrible. It's such a bad movie. It's horrible. I, and I got to tell you, yeah. I'm nervous about this coming week. <laughs> You're no, no shit, yeah. Dick Tracy. Yeah. All right. Um, well, you got an MVP, LVP, and I got three superhero counts. All right, my MVP. I'll tell you what. I'm I'm gonna go with Tim Curry. I okay. like Tim Curry. He's not great in this movie, but he's just an enjoyable presence for me. And if not Tim Curry, fucking Buzz. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I feel the same way about Brenda Fricker, so she's getting mine. Deal. Uh, who's your LVP? Donald Trump. Fucking good call. I didn't think of that, but yes. Yeah, because like you said, he's not just a cameo. He's printed all over this fucking Yeah, as long shit. as we have the opportunity to get that's Trump right. an LVP, we might as well. It ain't going to come again. So yeah, That's really going to hurt his fortunes. Um, <laughs> God, we're impotent as a country. Anyway. Yeah. Um, fucking nation of fools. Um, three superhero count. Okay. Tim Curry. Now, I had to ask you if this was... We actually had settled this a couple weeks ago, but I didn't remember. It, uh, movies like The Shadow. Oh, yeah. He's in that. Yeah, I Good mean, call. that's... And possibly the, Batman Returns, we decided. Right. Exactly, mm -hmm. I think. Um, so they're counting that. That's one. Rob Schneider was in Judge Dredd. Fucking good pull. Thank I you. always forget. You know what I get mixed up sometimes? What? Whether Rob Schneider was in Judge Dredd or Demolition Man. Or Demolition Man. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I really get that confused. Yeah, I get it. I mm -hmm. get it. All right, go uh, ahead. He's both, for all I know. Yeah, probably. Actually, I think he is in Demolition Man. Yo, is he in both of those movies? I think he is. I think he is. Yeah. Oh, he, he and, he and Stallone there. were just like broing out all the time in the 90s? So Weird. Yeah. All right. uh, th my third one is Ali Sheedy. Um, she was in X-Men Apocalypse as Scott Summers' teacher. That's a really good pull. I remember that scene. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Good Good call. Thanks, man. Uh, all right. Wrapping it up. Yeah. Next week. <laughs> all right. Thank, you can thank yourself. Yeah, I know. We'll, we'll be covering Home Alone 3, the theatrical release, written by John Hughes. Oh, we didn't fucking... We'll talk about him next week. Do you, you know that the editor of this movie, <laughs> of the editor of the first two home alone movies is this guy raja gosnell okay have you heard of him not till i saw this yeah he, he's just the editor and he goes on to kick off his directing career with home alone 3 and he Ooh. went on to make a lot of fucking movies he did both those scooby-doo movies he did never really? been kissed with drew barrymore really he did a bunch of movies yeah we'll talk about him next week because he's the director Okay. And um, then we'll also be talking about um, Home Alone, what's it called, Taking Back the House or something? I don't know, man. Which is like a new actor playing Kevin McAllister. And it well, was so is three, right? Three's not Macaulay anymore. No, 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 but it's not Kevin. It's a different oh. character. Uh, oh. In the fourth one, we're bringing back Kevin, but it's a different actor. I see. And, um, and that was supposed to be a pilot for a Home Alone TV series that never got picked up. Sure. And... Uh, when I first assigned this, basically, to Henry, <laughs> I didn't know that a fifth Home Alone existed. So mm. I'm letting Henry not watch that one. <laughs> That's from well, it, it wasn't released theatrically. No, it's so. a, it was straight to ABC Family, I believe. But you're going to watch it. I'm going to, if I have time. Yeah. Okay. So we'll right. definitely be covering three and four, and I might have just a little bit on that fifth one. All right. And uh, and we'll get through those a lot faster than Home Alone 1 and 2, because who could possibly care?